Hi, I'm Charlie with Precision Matthews, and today we're going to be talking a little more about the bandsaw. It's one of the simpler machines in the shop, but we can still aim to optimize how we use it. In this video, we'll cover how to handle and safely install a blade, how to select a blade's tooth count, and what to look for on feed rates. Let's get started. We have Tony here to demonstrate the safe handling of a bandsaw blade. He likes to use his boot as a third hand. You can see that the blade comes coiled in on itself and you just need to control it uncoiling. Alternatively, some people just toss the bandsaw blade in the air and get the heck away from it, but I don't love that method. I'm mentioning it because there are people who swear by it, but I'm not gonna recommend a method that looks like we're remaking the classic 1977 martial arts flick, Fatal Flying Guillotines. Removing the blade starts with the most important step, unplugging the machine. As long as you remember that step and you wear your PPE, it's hard to hurt yourself. Shout out to our next door neighbors, an industrial supply house called Action Supply, where we get all our PPE. We asked them for the brightest cut resistant gloves they could find, and as you can see, they came through. We like the cut gloves for their dexterity, but regular old leather gloves work too. Eye protection is also a must if you value your depth perception. The blade cover is secured with two thumb screws and it swings away. Then you need to take the orange blade guard off and loosen and swing away the blade brush. Once you have the blade cover open, you just release the blade tension with the top hand wheel screw and the blade will come off of the pulleys and come out of the bearing blade guides. We could have just run that last video in reverse to show you how to put the new blade on, but we're going the extra mile here. You'll place the blade into the blade guides, around the pulleys, then tighten the blade tension. Tony has the three-speed transmission in between gears so that the blade pulleys are free to spin and he can turn the blade over with his hands, which helps him get it seated on the pulleys. Flip the cover closed, swing the brushes back in place, and put the orange guard back on. Then, once the cover is secure, you can plug the machine back in and you're ready to go. Folding the blade you just took off back up for storage is not hard once you see how it's done. It feels like a magic trick every time though. Let's talk about blade selection and tooth count. Here's what I would call a fine, medium, and coarse blade. The goal is to have at least three teeth engaged in the cut at any one time. So let's say you're cutting quarter inch wall tubing. Once you get through the top skin and you're cutting just the side walls, you need at least three teeth within a quarter inch. That means you'll need at least 12 teeth per inch. Too fine or too coarse and you'll sacrifice efficiency and blade life and make some of the most unpleasant sounds you'll hear in the machine shop while doing it. It's not always possible to adhere to this, like when you're cutting sheet metal with the table on and the saw in the upright position, but it's a good guide. You can control feed rate with the air spring. We did a test here where we went at a very slow feed rate for the first half of the cut and then fast for the second. Most blade manufacturers put useful information on the back of their box and on their website, but you can use some general rules of thumb too. Our bandsaw has three speeds, 125 feet per minute, 215 feet per minute, and 270 feet per minute. You can think of them as slow, medium, and fast. Figure slow for cast iron, high carbon steel, stainless, and bronze, medium for mild steel and brass, and fast for aluminum, copper, and anything plastic and softer. Because we're cutting aluminum here, we're in the fastest blade speed setting, and we're only modulating feed rate. You can actually see the differences in feed rate when examining the chips. 
The slow feed rate that we started with produces the chips that are on the left, which are finer. The coarser chips on the right are from when we cranked the feed rate up on the second half of the cut. You can examine the chips and just watch how the saw is performing to dial in your feed rate. If the blade stalls or the chips get chunkier than the ones on the right, you want to dial it back or you'll have some blade life issues. Finally, I wanted to show the cut produced on that part, where we did slow feed pressure for the top half and faster for the bottom. I know that surface finish on saw cuts don't matter so much if you're going to machine the surface on a subsequent operation, but our friends in the welding and fabrication industry care, so they'll usually mess around with feed rate more than the saw operator in the machine shop. So there you have it. That should give you a good starting point to safely and efficiently cut stock on your bandsaw. As always, if you need more information or have specific questions about the best way to use your saw, don't hesitate to reach out to us. And if you have anything to add or thoughts on things we might have missed, let us know in the comments. Until next time, thanks for watching.